Hello everyone. So I wanted to make a clarification video today about the low back and how we should treat low back pain. So as many of you already know, I recommend having a nice little arch there in the low back in the lumbosacral area to be able to properly engage those lumbosacral erector muscles, but also to properly and circumferentially load those lumbar discs. There is not one anatomy book in the world that does not show the lumbar spine as neutrally lordotic. So the, the low back should, in neutral posture, have a mild or even moderate arch. And the muscles in the low back should be moderately, palpably active when you're standing up. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to this. And by this, I mean the correction for low back pain, because there's a couple of contraindications i.e. which patients should not be increasing their arches, and especially two patient groups that should not increase their lumbosacral arches to amend their low back pain, okay? So let me explain that. Number one, foraminal stenosis due to facet joint arthritis. That means that the root outlet, this is called the foramina, the neuroforamina, that's basically the hole that the nerve root comes out of, if there's a lot of arthritis here, or if you have a narrow uh, compartment there to begin with, this is congenital for a lot of patients. But if this compartment is narrow and you increase your arch, as you can see, there will be no space left for the root. This is, of course, an extreme example. But because, the, as you can see, the root out is huge, and then you make it very small. And this is exactly what happens as well in 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 human, human uh, anatomy. Um, now, if there's a lot of arthritis in the back there, and also combined, usually combined with the disc herniation, you, you see the root is actually like this. This is how the root is. The disc is, when you get a disc herniation, the disc goes down, so it reduces the space below the root, and then it's the arthritis actually that reduces the horizontal space for the root. So, if you have a combined disc lesion there, or disc art uh, arthritis lesion, and also arthritis in the back in the facet joints, I will show a picture. Uh, for the video, this will actually pre-narrow the foramen, the, the neuroforamen. And then when you increase the arch in the back, there is no real space there to begin with, and now you crush the root and you will have chronic radiculopathy. So that's a contraindication for, uh, for arching the back. Now, a lot of these patients, you see, foraminal stenosis is not liberally, uh, liberally reported in radiology report. A lot of the patients who suffer from this, they have unreported foraminal stenosis. It's actually, it, this is not a topic, but when you look at the MRI, it's actually pretty easy to see from the, from the sagittal plane. So from the side, it's pretty easy to see the stenosis, but when you, if you only look at the axial, okay, so from the center of the cross-section, if you only look at the axial images, it's very underwhelmingly demonstrated. So, if, so to really appreciate this problem, you need to look at the sagittal images, all right? And a lot of people don't, and therefore it's not in the reports and so on. And the other problem is that a lot of both surgeons and radiologists, especially radiologists, they don't know that this is a dynamic problem. So even though the root may uh, appear relatively free in the, in the image, the moment the patient stands up or arches their back, you now have compression of the root. So that's contraindication number one, foraminal arthritis and root stenosis. No, um, no increase in arching for these patients. Uh, number two, that's going to be anterolystasis. Gliding of the discs, uh, sorry, of the vertebra on top of each other. If you have spinal instability, either ligamentous, usually combined with some kind of facet joint damage, okay, you can start to see sl slippages of the vertebra. Research shows us that the, the increased antiversion or increased, you can call it extension, if you will, of the sacrum, i.e. arching of the low back, an increased arch will increase spondylolystasis or anterolystasis if it's already present. So, patients with any significant 
anterolithesis, they should also not be increasing their arch and posture. They should be focusing on, unfortunately, a little more flatness of the back and try to support that by doing strengthening of the muscles. It's not optimal, it is what it is, uh, but at least it will prevent, to some extent, significant worsening of the anterolithesis. Now, uh, back to the facet joint problem and the root outlet. If you have symptomatic foraminal stenosis, you cannot really treat this conservatively. I mean, you can flatten the back, of course, and increase the root outlet. That will decompress the root. But as I've said before, flexion angles cause more of this damage. So it's, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword. The best treatment for this is a small surgical procedure called a foraminotomy, where they basically shave down those facet joint uh, lesions, okay? So I hope this uh, video was informative for you. I hope to be putting out some more videos now in the future. Unfortunately, I don't have time nor effort really to put up all the equipment that I used to do before. My time is limited, so I hope that this relatively simple video is at least helpful for some of you, and I wish you all a great day.